Welcome to our video on the scary link between acid reflux and cancer. Acid reflux, also known as gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, is a common condition affecting millions worldwide. However, it's more than just an uncomfortable annoyance. Emerging studies suggest that long-standing untreated acid reflux can potentially lead to a type of esophageal cancer known as adenocarcinoma. In this video, we're diving deep into this worrying connection, examining the science behind it, discussing preventive measures, and empowering you to take action for your health. It's a conversation you don't want to miss, so stick around as we navigate these uncharted waters together. Remember, knowledge is power, and when it comes to your health, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Before we continue, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to help us reach more people, and ring the notification bell so you can be the first to know when our latest video comes out. Now back to our video. Firstly, let's clear up some terms. Acid reflux, commonly known as heartburn, occurs when stomach acid backs up into the esophagus, the tube connecting your throat and stomach. This creates a burning sensation and can cause discomfort or pain. However, when these symptoms become frequent or severe, you may have gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, a more serious and chronic form of acid reflux. According to a study published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, approximately 20% of the U.S. population suffers from GERD. That's one in every five people. Yet what's even more concerning is the research emerging about the potential long-term effects of untreated GERD. A 2018 study published in Cancer Epidemiology illuminated a worrying link between chronic GERD and the development of esophageal adenocarcinoma, a type of esophageal cancer. Researchers found that those with weekly GERD symptoms had double the risk of developing esophageal cancer compared to those without GERD. Now that's a statistic worth paying attention to. Even more concerning is a study published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology in 2017 which indicated that most people diagnosed with esophageal adenocarcinoma had suffered from GERD symptoms for many years prior to their diagnosis. It underscores the potentially serious consequences of chronic untreated acid reflux. Understanding this link is critical as we navigate our way to healthier lives. It shows that we need to be proactive about managing persistent GERD symptoms rather than just brushing them off as an inconvenience. So, Let's delve deeper into how this link is formed and what we can do about it. Now you might be wondering, how can acid reflux lead to something as serious as cancer? Let's break it down. At its most basic level, GERD involves stomach acid frequently entering the esophagus where it doesn't belong. This acid is highly corrosive and can damage the lining of the esophagus over time. The body responds to this damage with inflammation as it tries to heal. This chronic inflammation can cause cells in the esophagus to mutate and change, a process called metaplasia. The most common form of this is called Barrett's esophagus, a condition where the cells lining the esophagus start to resemble those of the stomach or intestines. While Barrett's esophagus itself isn't cancer, it's considered a precancerous condition because it significantly increases the risk of developing esophageal adenocarcinoma. In a 2015 study in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, researchers found that individuals with Barrett's esophagus were about 11 times more likely to develop esophageal adenocarcinoma than the general population. It's a concerning statistic and highlights the potential dangers that chronic, uncontrolled acid reflux can pose. However, not everyone with GERD will develop Barrett's esophagus or esophageal cancer. But understanding this potential link underscores the importance of managing GERD symptoms and seeking appropriate medical care if they persist. Next, let's discuss some of the strategies to manage GERD and potentially reduce these risks. Now, managing GERD effectively is pivotal to lowering the potential risks, and the strategies can range from lifestyle modifications to medication, and even surgery in some cases. Starting with lifestyle modifications, a study published in the Archives of Internal Medicine in 2006 indicated that maintaining a healthy weight is crucial. The researchers found that the risk of acid reflux symptoms increased along with body mass index, BMI, 
even for those categorized within the healthy weight range. So, keeping an eye on your weight and following a balanced diet could certainly be beneficial. The second lifestyle change is diet, and yes, it can make a significant difference. A fascinating 2017 study in JAMA. Otolaryngology, head and neck surgery, found that a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low in added sugars, in line with a traditional Mediterranean diet, coupled with alkaline water, could be as effective as traditional medication for reducing reflux symptoms. Moreover, these dietary choices have broader health benefits such as improved heart health and lower risks for certain types of cancer. Another lifestyle tweak involves sleep position. The American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy suggests elevating the head of your bed or sleeping at a slight incline to prevent stomach acid from traveling up into the esophagus at night. Simple, yet it could provide substantial relief. Quitting smoking is another crucial step. A comprehensive review published in the Archives of Internal Medicine in 2004 concluded that smoking cessation significantly reduced reflux symptoms. The harmful chemicals in cigarette smoke can weaken the lower esophageal sphincter, allowing stomach acid to escape into the esophagus. If lifestyle modifications aren't sufficient, medication might be necessary. Acid-suppressing medications like proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers can provide relief. They work by reducing the production of stomach acid. However, it's important to use these medications judiciously. A study in the journal Gut in 2020 found that prolonged use of these medications might increase the risk for several health conditions including gut infections and certain nutrient deficiencies. So, they should be taken under the guidance of a healthcare provider. In more severe cases, surgical interventions such as fundoplication or Lynx device placement might be required to reinforce the lower esophageal sphincter. All of these strategies serve the purpose of keeping your acid reflux in check, mitigating the potential link to more serious conditions such as cancer. As with many health matters, early intervention is key. If you're suffering from persistent acid reflux, do consult with a healthcare professional who can guide you towards the best solution for your situation. Now, let's discuss the important relationship between diet and GERD. We know that food affects us in many ways. It provides nutrients for growth and repair, affects our mood, and can either protect against or contribute to various health conditions. When it comes to GERD, your dietary choices can significantly influence the severity and frequency of symptoms. Certain foods are known to relax the lower esophageal sphincter, making it easier for stomach acid to backflow into the esophagus. These include high-fat foods, spicy foods, onions, citrus, chocolate, and caffeine. A study published in the Journal of Neurogastroenterology and Motility in 2015 reported that a diet high in these foods increased the likelihood of GERD symptoms. Meanwhile, other foods may directly irritate the already inflamed esophagus, like tomato-based products, citrus fruits, and spicy foods, making the symptoms feel worse. Alcohol is another notable factor. According to a 2014 study in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, alcohol consumption may increase the risk of GERD and Barrett's esophagus a complication of GERD, by affecting the motility, movement, of the esophagus. However, it's not just about the foods you should avoid, it's also about what to embrace. Foods high in fiber, for instance, have been shown to be beneficial. A study published in GUT in 2018 found that a higher intake of dietary fiber is associated with a lower risk of symptoms and could even protect against the development of GERD. The link between diet and GERD is clear but the exact dietary changes needed can vary person to person. What worsens symptoms in one person might not in another. For this reason, it may be helpful to keep a food diary to identify personal triggers and work with a registered dietitian to tailor a dietary plan that fits your needs, preferences, and lifestyle. And remember, the goal isn't to create a long list of forbidden foods, but rather to manage symptoms, promote healing, and improve quality of life. Next, we'll be exploring another crucial factor in managing GERD, stress and its role. The connection between the mind and the digestive system is often underemphasized, 
The gut is sometimes called the second brain because of the vast network of neurons lining our gastrointestinal tract. This is why our mental state can have such a profound impact on our digestive health. You may be surprised to learn that stress and anxiety can exacerbate GERD symptoms. A study published in the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology in 2015 demonstrated that there was a significant relationship between perceived stress and the severity of acid reflux symptoms. It also found that those with higher stress reported more painful symptoms. It's a bit of a vicious cycle. Stress can worsen GERD symptoms, and then the discomfort of those symptoms leads to more stress. So how can we break this cycle? There's a growing body of research pointing towards stress management strategies such as mindfulness, meditation, and yoga. A 2016 review of studies in the World Journal of Gastroenterology highlighted the potential of mind-body therapies to reduce symptoms and improve the quality of life in GERD patients. Specifically, a 2019 study in the International Journal of Yoga showed that a regular yoga practice could reduce the severity of GERD symptoms, including heartburn and regurgitation. Researchers suggest that yoga may help by reducing stress levels and improving the function of the esophageal sphincter. Another promising strategy is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, which aims to change patterns of thinking or behavior that are behind people's difficulties. A study published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology in 2019 found that CBT was effective in reducing the impact of GERD on people's quality of life, irrespective of the severity of their physical symptoms. Of course, it's essential to remember that these methods don't replace medical treatments, but serve as valuable additions to a comprehensive treatment plan. Stress management doesn't mean eliminating all stress, that's nearly impossible, but rather developing strategies to manage it effectively. Regular exercise, adequate sleep, and strong social connections also play vital roles in stress management and overall well-being. We hope that this information provides you with a deeper understanding of GERD and the potential implications if left untreated. Knowledge is power, and understanding the links between conditions like acid reflux and more serious diseases such as cancer can help us make more informed decisions about our health. Thanks for staying with us till the end, and remember, your health is your most valuable asset. If you found this video informative and helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Your support really helps our channel reach more people and spread the message about health and wellness. If you're new here or haven't yet subscribed to our channel, we invite you to hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon to turn on notifications. That way, you won't miss out on any of our future health content. And if you found this video particularly helpful and would like to support our mission further, you can do so by clicking the super thanks button below. It's a new way to show your appreciation and directly help us continue creating content like this. Finally, we would love to hear from you. Do you have any experiences or tips to share? Any questions or topics you'd like us to cover? Please drop a comment below. We truly appreciate your feedback and enjoy engaging with our community. Thanks again for watching. Stay informed and take care.